If you're like me and you've been thinking about buying the Mavic Mini, you've probably watched all the videos you possibly could on this thing. So I got mine a couple days ago and I just wanted to give you a few pointers. First off, before I forget, don't try to take that white plastic off. That's the LED light and it flashes different colors depending on what's going on and I'm sure you've seen this in other videos but to take the guard off the gimbal you pull on the tab gently over here you hear that click and then you kinda just pull it out there are a couple of hooks one there and one there and when you're putting it back on I've noticed that you, the gimbal has to be pretty straight and just be careful not to force it back on because you might have to do a couple of tries before you get it back on there and then you just push it in like that and it's in. What have I learned? Well I did crash it and my wife made a lot of fun of me. She could hear me coming and she thought I was going to fly up the stairs and show up but I never made it that far. Thankfully nothing happened, nothing broke the propellers got a little bit scuffed up. They took some paint off the wall, but I took some rubbing alcohol to them and they're almost as good as new. So it's a tough little guy. I already crashed it once and it's still doing well. There are a few things that you should look out for though. Uh, the first thing is don't expect to fly this the first day you get it, unless you get it in the morning. The battery won't come fully charged. I had to download the firmware and that took a while. And I thought that was all I had to do, but then I had to pair up the drone and load the firmware onto the drone. And I couldn't do that because I got a message on the app saying that the RC has to be charged at least 30%. So then I had to plug the RC in, go do other things around the house, and then come back down and pair them up and then it updated. And the biggest disappointment that I have right now with this is related to these prop guards. Now these prop guards can be tricky to put on. So what you want to do is you have to kind of make sure the props are out of the way like that and you have to put this this little landing gear part through the top the first hole like that and then kind of put it on like that. Taking them off is a lot trickier actually than putting them on and even clipping these little things on is quite challenging. So that's not my frustration, but I figured I might as well show you how to put these on while I'm talking about it. So yeah, taking them off is kind of tricky. Something I found is that the props get caught up in the cage, so making the props point towards the drone will save you a lot of grief. So then I guess take the back one out first, maybe? or both of them, lift them up slightly, and then the back one, and then the front one. That seems to work. So here's my frustration. I live in Canada, and the legal requirement here for drones 250 grams and over, so not this one, I didn't think, is a four kilometer radius around airports. I live 3.65 kilometers away. No problem. I thought I could fly the drone in the house. And yes, I know I crashed the drone. I didn't have these on at the time. Silly me. But when I first powered the drone on, I was upstairs in our kitchen and it wouldn't let me fly because we're too close to the airport. And I was just frustrated because I bought this drone to be able to fly anywhere I want while keeping people and aircraft out of danger and safe. So I thought it was up to me to be responsible enough not to be reckless. Now I would not ever imply or hint or anything to fly a toy anywhere near an aircraft, whether it's a light drone or a model plane or anything. Just stay away from aircraft and other drones, which are also aircraft. But I thought that I'd still be able to do it in my house. 
So the way I got around that is I came here in my basement and the drone was not able to, to connect the satellites. So I was able to fly it around this room for a little bit. Basically the joysticks are housed in here and here. You take them out, you screw them on, and you flip the antennas up and away. Then you plug the appropriate adapter into this end. And once all that's done, you stick your phone in. It's probably easier if you unlock it first, unless you have Face ID on. Then squeeze these two thingamabobbers together. Make it nice and snug. And then you can plug your phone in. You can plug your phone in first, but I find that's kind of tricky. To turn on the remote, kind of double click the power button, but the second time you press that on, you press and hold, so... Like that. And when it beeps, you know what's on? I still have a full charge on the battery, that's good. And then I will turn on this thing. Same thing, double click. This one doesn't really make a beep, but it... Oh! It's making me a liar. And then you click the connect aircraft at the bottom corner. You, uh, I like to click camera view. And then you will see what the camera sees. Ooh. Okay, so it's pretty easy to format the SD card. If you scroll down on that error screen, you can click, or you can tap the format button and then you tap it again and it formats the card within seconds. So that's good. It did connect to a satellite after I flew around the room for a few seconds and it gave me 90 seconds to land. So I flew back over the desk and I was able to land. When it get, gives you the 90 second countdown, you do have time to find a spot to land before it lands automatically, so that's good. Now, there's one thing that really bugs me about the controls, and I'm not sure if I can reconfigure it or not, but the takeoff and landing button, I guess, for lack of a better term, is right there on my phone. I have a Samsung Galaxy S10e, and it's just, it's almost impossible to reach because it's so close to that, that cell phone holder right there. So I have, sometimes I have to tap it a couple times to reach it. It would be nice if they could move it even like a quarter of an inch closer to the center. Maybe half an inch would be better, but so far that's the only bad thing I can see about this app. This is my first time ever owning a drone, so I don't really have experience with drones or apps of drones. I am looking forward to trying it out in the outdoors, for real. Because flying in this room, it's like 12 by 12 feet, it's tiny. It's been raining since I got it, so I haven't been able to test it out. I've seen tests on other YouTube videos where they test pouring water on it and pushing it around and pulling it. Maybe not pushing, they tie a string and pull on it, crash it into a tree a couple times. So they're pretty durable, but I'm not going to go in the water deliberately because I want this thing to last. I want to take some nice footage with it all around our area here. We have some nice beaches, some really nice rock formations, and I just want to use it, put some videos up on YouTube, and share the beauty of where we live. Write the comments below, and thumbs up for thumbs down. Bye.